Welcome to 5 Minute 40k, the short sharp look at all things hobby. First up, an apology. I know I've been a little bit light on content on the channel recently, and that's because my day job has been very, very, very busy in the run up to Christmas, so I haven't really had time to do anything. Nonetheless, I have a lot of videos on the way, and over Christmas I will have some time to get those together. I've got some content with my friend Rich, who is an expert at the Necrons, looking at their changes coming out of the balanced data slate, which I hope some of you guys will find interesting. But thanks for sticking with me, and I also just wanted to say before I move on to the video, thanks very much for supporting the channel throughout the year. It's massively appreciated. If you are new, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It you know helps me uh, see that you guys are enjoying the videos, and that's why I want to make them, if you guys are enjoying them. And also to everybody listening and watching, a very happy Christmas for it is just around the corner. Anyway, on with today's video on something that's got me very excited as someone who's getting into Tyranids, who has just put together a Tyranid army and run one at a tournament, which is the Crusher Stampede, a new army of renown for the Tyranids from the as yet unreleased White Dwarf number 471. So what is this all about then? Well, an army of renown for the Tyranids is going to be in the newest White Dwarf number 471, which is due out on Saturday, so at the time of recording, uh, it's just before that, this is going to be out on the 18th of December. And it looks like it's going to make the whole Nidzilla or Monster Mash list of big Tyranid bugs, which are really cool, viable again. If you don't know what armies of renown are, they're a relatively new mechanic that's been introduced to the game. They came around in 9th as part of the first Warzone Caradon expansion. And they basically give you additional rules for your army alongside a series of restrictions on what you can take. We've seen them before for a few different forces, so we've got the less competitive Free Blade Lance for the Imperial Knights, although that's because Imperial Knights just aren't that competitive uh, generally at the moment, unfortunately. And those that have actually seen quite a bit of play, so the Terminus Est Assault Force for the Death Guard was popular for a little while, and the Skitari Veteran Cohort gave the Admech even more rules, because, you know, they needed them. But anyway, enough of the salt. What about the Nids? What are they getting? So... The basics of the Crusher Stampede. We'll start with the restrictions. You're not allowed any swarm units and you're not allowed models with a wounds characteristic of two or less. So goodbye Termagants, Hormagants, that kind of thing. For each unit in the army that doesn't have the monster keyword, you must include at least one monster unit. So really focusing on the big bugs here. And all units in the army must have a Tyranids keyword and be from the same Hive fleet. So you can have Hive Fleet Leviathan, Kraken, etc. Your benefits. All units in the army get the Crusher Stampede keyword. Units without the monster keyword get the Shielded by the Hive Mind ability, which means they can't take a Hive Fleet adaptation. So, for example, if they're Leviathan units, they don't get the 6-up Feel No Pain that you get as part of Leviathan. But they do get a 5-up Invern save. Likewise, units with the monster keyword get the Hulking Behemoth's ability. So, again, no Hive Fleet adaptation and they get a 5-plus Invern save. And in addition to that, they are minus one damage against income atta incoming attacks, again to a minimum of one, as usual with these rules. And models in the unit count as a number of models equal to their remaining wounds characteristic for the purposes of determining control of objective markers in the game. I.e., if you have 16 wounds, that's 16 models. You're not obsec, but that can be the difference between holding the objective and not, depending on what the enemy has on there. You also get access to the Crusher Stampede Warlord traits, stratagems, and psychers in the army can generate powers from the Mass Convergence discipline. So, let's have a look at some of those. So, the Warlord traits. Raging Influence. This gives you hit rolls of 6 or an additional hit for Crusher Stampede monster units that are within 6 inches of the Warlord. Savage Intimidation means that enemy units melee attacks are minus 1 to hit and enemy units are minus 1 to combat attrition tests while they are within 3 inches of the Warlord. And finally Rampaging Beast lets you add D3 attacks to the Warlord once per turn when it fights. In terms of Psychic Powers, the Mass Convergence Discipline gives us 3. Synaptic Barrier, which is Warp Charge 6 gives a 4 plus Invan save for a Crusher Stampede unit within 18 inches of the Casting Psyker. That's really good. Aggressive Surge, again, Warp Charge 6, lets you add D3 to the attacks characteristic of a Crusher Stampede unit within 18 inches of the Casting Psyker. Again, quite good because Tyranid monsters don't have many attacks generally. That's one of their big letdowns. 
and finally infused energies for warp charge six again allows you to re-roll hit rolls in melee for a crusher stampede unit excluding synapse units within 18 inches of the casting psyker so no using this on like a trigon prime or on the swarm lord but does give you the option to get the most out of your attacks when you go in on something like let's say a side tierra duel it's quite cool let's have a look at the stratagems so coming in first, we've got Thunderous Impact. This is 2 CP. Use it in the fight phase when your Crusher Stampede monster finishes a pile in move. You select an enemy monster or vehicle unit with an engagement range. You can only attack that selected enemy unit, but you add one to your hit, wound, and damage rolls for the attacks. So a little bit restrictive, perhaps a bit situational, but if you have got a vehicle you want to kill or a monster you want to kill, yeah, this is probably the best way to do it. Terrifying Charge for 1 CP can be used at the start of the morale phase. You select an enemy unit with an engagement range of a Crusher Stampede monster that charged that turn, and that unit is minus 3 to its leadership characteristic. Another example of Games Workshop trying to make leadership happen again seems pretty situational to me. Unbreakable Chitin, 1 CP or 2 CP if the target unit has 5 or more models, or mod models with 10 or more wounds in it. You can use it in any phase. The target unit cannot be wounded on a wound roll of a 1 to 3. That's right, it is Tyranid Transhuman. So, do you fancy some Hive Guard that uh, can only be wounded on a 4-up? Well, now you can do it. People are probably going to complain about that one, but hell, if you're a Tyranid player, sounds fun to me. Death Surge is 2 CP. You use this in the fight phase when a Crusher Stampede monster uh, model, excluding characters, is destroyed. It then fights on death following the attacking model finishing its attacks and is considered to have all wounds remaining for determining what profile to use when attacking, if obviously it has a diminishing profile, if that's relevant, which I'm pretty sure all the monsters do. Maybe wrong on that one. Again, quite cool as a way to get a fight on death and get some revenge if your nice little monster has been taken out. Next up, we've got Breaking Through for 1 CP. Use it in the charge phase when a Crusher Stampede monster finishes a charge. Select an enemy model with an engagement range and roll a number of D6 equal to your unit's remaining wounds. Basically, if your strength is higher than the enemy model's toughness, for each 3 plus uh, you roll, the enemy model's unit suffers a mortal wound to a maximum of 6. If strength and toughness are the same, you roll for each... You, you, Dole out a mortal wound for each four plus roll, again to a maximum of six. And if their strength is, if your strength is lower than their toughness, for each five plus roll, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound, again to a maximum of six mortal wounds. Really quite cool and an interesting way to dole out some mortal wounds in your combat or ahead of combat, because it's in the charge phase. Next up, we got Rad Rabid Adaptation for 1 CP. Use this before the battle and select one Crasher Stampede Tyranid Warriors unit. And you're probably going to be including these guys as your troops here, by the way, just given the uh, the wound restrictions. They get a 2 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill. Stratum can be used once below 2,000 points, twice uh, at Strike Force, so 2,000 to 3,000, and three times at uh, Onslaught Battle Size. Pretty cool. Let sure uh, Tyranid Warriors be that even bit better without having to keep a Tyranid Prime around or use their new Synaptic Link ability on themselves. Enhanced Brain Functions is next for 1 CP or 2 CP on units larger than 5 models. Again, use it in the shooting phase. Select a Crush Stampede Tyranid Warrior unit that's within engagement range of enemy models. Basically, they can fire into combat like they were a monster using the Big Guns Never Tire rule, i.e. minus one to hit when firing heavy weapons, so if they've got any of the, uh, the big cannons, and they cannot shoot with blast weapons either. Still pretty cool and a nice way of getting some shooting out of your Tyranid Warriors if they are stuck in combat. So... As you can probably tell, I'm quite excited about this. I think this is really cool and a great way to get your big bugs back on the table. As I say, it offers a decent new way to play the Tyranids from what we've seen. So you're not just looking at just Hive Guard and loads of Gene Stealers and resurrects the Nidzilla concept, which I just think, as I say, is really cool. The Psychic Powers and the Warlord Traits are a can-choose option, not a must-choose. So you can still use the Hive Mind Discipline and you can still use those Warlord Traits from uh, Warzone Octarius or from the Tyranid book if you so wish. The Dermic Symbiosis adaptation that people always took on their big monsters because it gave them a 5-up um, uh, uh, invulnerable save and counting as uh, double the wounds on the damage table is basically now in the bin if you're running a Crusher Stampede because you get the 5-up uh, five five invulnerable save anyway. Hive Guard do get an inbuilt 5-up now and you can use Transhuman on them. It's pretty spicy and I suspect we're probably going to see some moaning about that and yes... Hive Guard definitely have some issues, but let's be fair, if you're running around with a 90-point Succubus that can dole out about 10 mortal wounds or something stupid like that, you're not really in a position to complain, let's be fair. 
It also benefits popular units like the Swarm Lord. I mean, he's got a 3-up invert in combat and he's going to be minus 1 damage. That's pretty cool. You don't get the Hive Fleet adaptations, but you do, again, get access to the Warlord traits, the stratagems, etc. Which means, um, you know, because you've still got the, the Hive Fleet keyword, which means that all the Leviathan goodness from Warzone Octarius Rising Tide remains. So I've given some examples here. You can put Obsec on a unit and it can still shoot um, for... Um, if it's doing an action for 1 CP via the Hive Mind Imperative. And you can get Exploding Sixes via Relentless Flurry, which is pretty cool. So I think you are still going to see Leviathan hanging around, even with the Crusher Stampede. It's also very spicy on the well-priced at the moment Forge World units like Demacarons, Hyrajules and Haridans. I've got a Scythe Hyrajule, um, and I'm really looking forward to giving it some play. I took it to a tournament recently, and it was great fun uh, to play with. Um, it perhaps is not the best unit um, in, in many ways, but I think this really does boost up its competitive uh, ability. It's also going to give play for underutilized units like Harpies, Hive Crones, maybe also Toxicreens, Harrispexes. If you're a Tyranid player and you've got some of these, comment down below. I'd love to know what you think. And, of course, you're probably still going to want to take things, well, I say still going to want to take, people haven't been taking these, but something if like a DAC effect, so it's a Khan effect with four Devourers, or a Tyran effect with Acid Spray, or a Flying Hive Tyrant with Devourers, to really clear out any hordes of obsec models that enemies might put on objectives, and then take advantage of your wounds equal models on objectives rule. I think that might be interesting. Again, if you're a Nid player, let me know what you think in the comments down below. It's worth remembering as well that Nid monster attacks are still low, although they can be boosted by things like the psychic powers in this uh, army of renown so you're still going to want something to like clear out large blobs of units thanks for watching i know it's a little bit longer than my five minute 40k handle suggests but i'm just very excited by this particular army of renown and i'm going to try and build something interesting around it let me know again your suggestions your comments if you're a nid player or if you're not a nid player what you're scared of down below in the comments and again don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video um, and comment to let me know what other things you'd like to see on 5 Minute 40k. And just before I sign off, again, I hope everybody watching has a wonderful, wonderful Christmas or holiday period and a brilliant new year. Catch you soon, guys.